blessed? Please, you may be seated. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Wow. Good. Amen. Uh, this is on Friday. And uh, we're not having an evening service, that's so why we made it in the morning. And I believe that God is going to speak to us in a special way. Especially on matters to do with land. Land is a subject that uh, if you don't have understanding about uh, it might challenge you. The battles you may face, the breakthroughs you may not encounter simply because you don't have the understanding that you need to deal with the land. And you know, in Ephesians 4.18, it says, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them. Leave that sound there, please. It's okay. Because of the ignorance that is in them. So ignorance will cause you not to experience the goodness of God. And then they say big Lord as the Bible says my people are destroyed or they perish because of they don't know. Then Daniel 11.32 says the people who do know they are God shall do exploits shall be strong and shall do exploits. You see Knowledge doesn't bring knowing. It brings liberty. It brings freedom. You can't function beyond the understanding you have. You can't. The Bible says they move from strength to strength. Every one of them that appeareth where? In that. But we know strength is a function of knowledge. For a man of knowledge is what? Is strong. So it's not just appearing in Zion. It's what are you collecting from Zion. That is what will determine whether you're moving from what? From strength to strength. There must be something you're collecting in your heart and in your spirit. A certain knowledge must be coming to your heart if you're to move from strength to strength. Because a man's strength is a function of his knowledge. What he knows. As I say, a man of knowledge, a wise man is strong. Yea, a man of knowledge does what? Increaseth in strength. And they move from strength to strength each and every one of them that appears in Zion. It's very, very important, therefore, not only to come to Zion, but to come to learn. For out of Zion shall proceed the law and the word of God from Jerusalem. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2 and 3. And then in Jeremiah chapter 3, is it verse 23 or verse 15? This is as that Jeremiah 3, 15 says, I will give you pastors that will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Jeremiah 3, 15. So it's all about understanding. Is it not the one in Psalm 119 verse 144? It says the testimonies 
He said, the righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting or are everlasting. He says, give me understanding and I shall live. Give me understanding. Psalm 119 verse 144. And then the proverb says, said that he that departed from the path of understanding, they shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So it's all about understanding. It's all about understanding. If you come to church or if you're listening to such a message, whether online, and your heart is not gaining spiritual understanding, you have just wasted your destiny and your life. And that's why one of the functions of the priest is to give the law. Amen? Is to, is to not only give the law, but also to explain it. For out of Zion shall proceed the law and the word of God from Jerusalem. Your understanding determines your life. I've come to a level whereby I don't pity anyone. I pity their ignorance. Any dummy can succeed if he knows what to do. Any dummy can succeed if he knows what to do. Give a man money, you have killed him. Give him understanding, you have given him an inheritance. I was so touched the other day. There's another guard in another building. A mall, actually. No, it's not a mall, a building. I frequent there because of a few things. And any time I pass there, I leave him something. So the other day he told me, Pastor, I appreciate what you're giving me, but teach me how to get it. A guard. He said, I appreciate this, but teach me how to do it. I will not be surprised if after some time I will not find him there. Because something has changed in his thinking. A beggar is a beggar not because he asks for money. A beggar is a beggar because he has a mentality of begging. That's why no matter how much you give him, you will still be back begging. Because he has convinced himself that the only way I can survive is by what? And you know those beggars have a lot of money. Especially those who are in some areas. You know, it's in degrees. A beggar in Lovington is not the same as a beggar in Isili. Because even what comes is in degrees. So you can imagine if per day they carry on 4,000 which I understand is, is on the minimum. Because like in my area, we don't even have coins. So what comes is what you give. Abi. And you can imagine how many people have given that lady or that man. So I understand minimum may be even 4,000. 4,000 a day. Times that by 30. How much is that? Accountant. 120,000. Hey. Hey. You name Shara, I'm to go office. What? But why is he still back begging? Mentality. And he believes that the only way I can live is by doing God. So he's not a beggar because he's begging. He's a beggar because of what? Mentality. Your mentality determines your placement. And your mentality is a function of your understanding. It's a function of your understanding. Uh, and that's why it says, though the Lord gives you the bread of affliction, and makes you take the waters of adversity. It says, you shall not put your teachers in the corner. For while the teachers are teaching, you shall hear a word behind thee saying, this is the way, walk in it. It says, no matter what you're going through, the mistake you can make is not to come to church. 
is in Isaiah chapter 30. Verse verse 20. Isaiah 30, 20 says, oh, the, Lord, the Lord gives you the bread, the water, the bread of the bread of water. The, the bread of adversity has the waters of affliction. It says, You shall not put your teachers into a corner anymore. For while they're teaching, thou shalt hear a word. A word. So what you're going through is not as important at what, as what is going through you. Are you catching the flow? What you're going through is not as important as what is going through you. As long as you're listening to your teachers, it shall come out. Because you win the battle within first. It is a changed man that changes situations. Oh, we want our nations to change. A changed nation is as a result of a changed citizen. And you can't change without understanding. We in, in church this morning, people are sleeping and everyone has his own freedom. But the reason why we're in church is because we have a certain level of understanding. True or false? Now, one day a pastor asked me, must you do service almost every day? He does Sunday and then I think is it Thursday Bible study and then again Sunday. You just pre and then the Sunday is once. So I asked him, you just preach once on Sunday and you feel you're tired. The tiredness should go until Thursday. What kind of preaching is that? that, that Sunday only. Then the next time we'll do Bible studies on Thursday. No wonder he has time to loiter from Hotel 1 to Hotel 2 to Hotel 3 to dash to Mwea, get some rice, come back, dash to a hero, get some fish, come back, dash to him. At that time, you're preaching on Sunday only. In the era of YouTube, you're preaching on Sunday only. Please examine yourself. What you have are no members. Do you know who is talking to them from Monday morning? Post something on your timeline and do like refresh. Within a minute, you realize other people have posted 58 things, Abby. Then you are preaching on Sunday only. There's an understanding you don't have. Another one that I asked, me, I didn't understand how he does it. Every day is guest. Sunday one guest, Sunday two guest, Sunday three guest. What time do you preach? When do, when do you talk to your people? When do you labor until your Christ is formed in their hearts? Paul said in Galatians chapter 4, he says, I labor until what? Ah. He told me he cannot do without visitors. He told me. He said, I my shangu never again. I therefore call your heart to the path of grace. To seek understanding. Amen? Amen? Go for knowledge. Buy books. Buy tips. Keep going back to the YouTube that we upload. To the Facebook. Listen again and again and again until something changes on the inside. Last week there's an area of my life that was attacked a little in the spirit. And I said, no, don't worry. I know why an attack is coming in that area. It's in the spirit. You can't even if I try to explain to you, so just, just get the example. It's nothing physical. So I went to my archives and I got some books and some tips in that area. And I've started a listening and a reading program to strengthen that area. Every man's attack is as a result of his spiritual ignorance. Any area in your life that you're not functioning as Christ will want you to function is because you don't know enough in that area. When you know better, you live better. And it's not mental knowledge. It's what? Spiritual knowledge. Which by repetition it becomes a revelation. 
and crisis for me then. I went to bed quite late. But in the morning, I've eaten a few chapters. I'm a wild man now. Things are turning on the inside. I eat chapters every day. I can't see a day without eating chapters. For where? How will I do it? How will I live? I was having a little Bible study with the mama yesterday. And I was telling her, we don't read to preach. We eat these things so that we can live by them. Galatians says, chapter 3, he that does these things shall live by them. Any attack is testing your knowledge. Any area of insufficiency in your life is checking your knowledge base. It's checking your knowledge base. It's checking your knowledge base. One of my sons did something very humbling yesterday. And then uh, with his wife. So I was driving home and I said, I think I'd underestimated some of my children. These people have grown in understanding. And then I asked the wife, so you people, how did you come up to this decision? He said, no, no, no. We know a few things. We have understood a few things. There's an understanding that makes Satan be careful before he approaches you. Please, never forget this. Knowledge does not bring knowing. It brings liberty. Spiritual knowledge. It is head knowledge that brings knowing. But spiritual knowledge brings liberty. It says you shall know the truth. And then the truth shall set you free. shall know. You shall know. You shall know. I don't know why I'm going the path. This path, it, my message is learned, but let the Holy Ghost speak to you. Understanding is power. Spiritual understanding, again I want to repeat, does not bring knowing. It brings liberty. If you truly know, you'll be free. If you truly know, you'll be free. In Proverbs 11 verse 9, the hypocrite through his mouth deceiveth his neighbor. But the just through knowledge through knowledge shall know. No, through knowledge shall be delivered. So true spiritual knowledge brings liberty, doesn't bring knowing. It's not about what you explain, it's about what you experience. You can explain many things, but how many things do you experience? How many things do you experience? Now, on Sunday, we had our Thanksgiving, and I kept asking in my heart, what do I give for Thanksgiving? And God gave me a figure. It was wired. What I wired, God has brought it back to my life this week in multiple times. And it's just Friday. So someone who asked me, in fact, it's actually Mama and uh, her friend said, Ah, you, you know, when you saw it comes quickly, us, we have to wait, we eat the seed has to die, and all that. I said, Listen, Mama, we all go through the same. But the point is this the depth of understanding is what determines the rate of returns. The depth of understanding is what determines the rate of returns. The depth, the depth, the depth. How deeply you understand something determines how fast it will produce for you. I strongly believe in giving and sacrifice that when I release it, I don't think, I don't even wait for the seed to die. It died before it was released. understand it. A man of God, is it last week or this week? Last week? Ask me, I've watched you for a few years. What is the secret of power? I wish you know my answer. I told him I read the Bible. 
Does it make that does that answer make sense? <laughs> he shook his head. We were in four points. He said, I knew you no know, tell me. I told him, sir, I read Bible. That is the secret of power. I read Bible. Probably to him, Bible is for preaching. But for me, that is written Christ. When I touch Bible, I'm touching Christ in written form. When I put Christ in me, ah, he has to manifest. He has to manifest. He has to manifest. I, 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 I believe in God's power to an extent that even if I'm not on the altar, I can release it anywhere I go. Because it's a living thing. It's not, it's not, it's not how I'm trying to do this. No, I'm, I'm with Christ every day. God has said it's a month of new beginning. You cannot begin with old knowledge. New beginning means you have a new revelation and that new revelation that will give you what? New beginning. A new revelation necessarily does not mean a new piece of information. It means knowing what you know better. Huh? Knowing what you know better. Can somebody say I am tired of eating ugali? I've eaten ugali or gari or pizza for the last since I was what not. So I want something new. Can, can the body say that? Till tomorrow. Even people who are 80 years, they're eating the same pasta, the same gari, the same ugali, the same pizza. Abi? Uh, even at 90, are they, not, are they not having the same rice? Rice is rice now. Is it the same rice they ate when they are 20s? So is your spirit man. You can, a spirit man cannot say, I am tired of hearing about tithing. I'm tired. It is the same way the body cannot say, I'm tired of eating rice. Can't. That's why when you understand spiritual things, you're not tired of repeating them. Do you know how many times I've preached about land? And there's nothing new. Somebody called me last night and said, hey, 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 hey. Ilandia, this time in Natoka, you know, it's the same scriptures. It's the same Jeremiah 22, 29. It's the same thing. What is fresh is anointing. But it is the same rice. It's the same rice, the same spiritual onions, the same spiritual to tomatoes I'm using to prepare the meal. It's the same. What you feel that is powerful is the freshness of oil. How do you get understanding? I think, let me just finish on this. Number one is you must be thirsty. You must know that nothing happens by guesswork. I have a daughter now who is very aggressive in her givings. She's watching a precious, precious, precious daughter. She, she wrote me a text last week and said, I've come to understand some of the things you say. Papa, you keep saying realities are programmed. I'm programming my own. Now, she has left the realm of 10%. She is in the realm of 20%. She gives 10% tithe, 10% seed. Everything that comes away, I, I know her. I know giving was a challenge. Now, the kind of consistency she's having. Yesterday when she deposited her own, I said, ah, mama, because she's a very serious businessman, businesswoman. I say, hey, this one, watch her. She will change levels while others are complaining here. So you get understanding by number one, thirst. You must be thirsty. You must want it. I've always told you that miracles don't go where they're needed. They go where they're wanted. God does not meet you because you have a need. God meets you because you want him to meet you. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want, not I shall not need. So you must be thirsty. In Isaiah chapter 40, is it 44? I will pour water on him that is thirsty. Verse 3 and 4. Floods on the dry ground. I will pour water. Isaiah 44 verse 2, 3 and 4. I will pour water on him that is thirsty. And floods on the thirsty ground. I will pour my spirit on all flesh. And, uh, and my blessing upon thy seed. Thy offspring of thy seed. Yeah. That's it. 
Jesus said, come to me all ye that are thirsty. Is it John chapter 7? Yes. And I will give you waters that thou shalt drink and shall thirst no more. There must be a thirst. You know, some politicians, if they got born again, they will be more spiritual than most of you. The way they are, they are thirsty for power. Somebody, you, you don't need to be a prophet. You know this one is going nowhere. And is he declaring, I'll be the president. I will be the president. Vote for me. And he's spending millions. His own people are not voting for him. But check his life after that. They always get something after that. True or false? Because no thirst goes without a reward. No thirst goes without a reward. Anytime you're thirsty and you're passionate concerning something, you may not get the thing, but you'll not miss a reward. You may not get it, but you can't miss a reward. It is passion and thirst that is rewarded, not effort. It is passion and thirst that is rewarded, not passion. No, no, no. It's passion that is rewarded, not effort. Till tomorrow, you will not forget Donald Trump. He is still famous. He doesn't need an office to be famous. True or false? Because his passion for what he does is unmatchable. Life does not reward effort as per se. Life rewards passion and thirst. Anytime you're passionate and thirsty concerning something, you may not get the thing, but you cannot lack reward. Because life has a way of rewarding passion. Thirst. So how do you get spiritual understanding? By what? By passion. You must be passionate about spiritual understanding. You must be passionate. Some of the things you find are stuck here. I can't remember a day I went to bathroom without something playing in the background. As I'm dressing up, preaching is going on. As I'm done doing my thing, as they take me to the car, it is playing. As I enter the car, I continue with it. Am I talking to somebody? This thing is not by guesswork. It's not by guesswork. And do you know God now has brought me to the realm of visions and dreams? Naanza kuona... That is kwa naona, lakini nanza kwa na nini, wazi wazi katika ndoto na maono. Ata leo ndikuwa na moja. Naona vizuri. You thought I used to see. Ah, this one is another level. Today I dreamt with one of my leaders. I saw. Wazi nini, wazi wazi. And I heard the conversation she had on phone. She's not in the service today, so relax. <laughs> and in the vision, she was talking, then I went, I, I was, we were divided by a wall. Then I had the conversation. Then I went round, then she went the other side. We are in the spirit at that time. I had the conversation, oh, I will address it on Sunday. Naona nini? Naona nini? Wazi wazi. The realm of vision sometimes. But thirst. You get understanding by being thirsty. Being passionate. You can't be listening to classic, uh, what else? Uh, eh? What else? Kameme. Kamumu. All the case. And there's nothing wrong with those stations. Please don't get me wrong. No, I'm not fighting any session. There's nothing wrong. But it cannot be your radio is on manenos going around from morning to living. Unaish is your kimao. And you know the traffic now on Mombasa Road. So you can be there for two hours. So two hours you listen to how people are divorcing, others are fighting, others 
I've had child with somebody else. They have denied the DNA is out. Then now, for two hours. Is it your DNA? Do you know the junk you have put in your spirit for those two hours? You can't see anything. But for those two hours, you can take a message about divine health. By the time you get to town, the cough disappears. You must learn to invest time. Don't spend it. Time is not spent. Time is invested. Time is invested. We don't spend it. You budget time the way you budget money. I was telling somebody, you must have a regular time when you go to bed and when you wake up. You cannot just be saying today you're sleeping at 1, tomorrow at 2, next tomorrow I'm watching a movie, then you wake up today at, at 5 in the morning because you're active, the next tomorrow you wake up at 7, the other tomorrow you wake up at 10 in the morning, you're very tired. You cannot live like that. You don't have a passion. You get spiritual understanding by developing passion. And it's not a gift. It's a decision. You have to decide what to pursue. What to do first determines what God does second. When you decide to pursue knowledge, he gives you the grace to get it. Amen? He gives you the grace to get it. I love what one apostle said the other day. Another young man was trying to do something. I don't know this business of ministry. And was just doing it anyhow. And the man of God told him, Oga, you don't have sense. Go buy it. The way you're doing these things, you don't understand what you're doing. Go buy sense. You don't have it. Go buy book. Read. I know how to do this thing. You have started business. You haven't read even two books about the business you're reading. What business are you doing? Passion. And then number two, you must be a reader. The average poor man does not love reading. Whether born again or born again, the average poor man, I'm sorry to use the word poor, I don't like using it, but you will not find them with books. They say, I just love listening, you know. What nonsense is that? There is something that you get by reading that you don't get by listening. You know, listening is another voice speaking to you, but reading is the, your, your voice speaking to you. I have no problem with listening. I listen a lot. But you cannot replace listening with reading. Okay. Can I go deeper? There are these Bible tapes that people buy. Then you listen. Someone reads the book of Matthew. You listen, you listen, you listen. You know that. Uh, I, I know some of you do it. And there's nothing wrong with that. But you cannot compare that one with you reading. Because someone else's voice is not your voice. When you read, you talk to yourself. You must learn to read. Thank God for listening, but you must learn to read you with book, you with the Bible. That's how you get understanding when your own spirit is talking to your mind. The book of Galatians. I, Paul, and Sostenes talk to you. No, 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 no. Verse 2. No, 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 no. This is how you can get up. You can get up. You can get up. You can get up. You can get Sostenes, you think, is a place. Because consider the way the person is, 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 is pronouncing it. Sostenes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, read. Don't let another person read for you. Read now. Read. There is power when you talk to yourself. No, Ahala. Listen, I listen a lot. But un the understanding that will transform you is the one you read to yourself. And that's why, even when you're listening, learn to take notes. Abi? And then read the notes. When you hear yourself talking to yourself, revelation dawns. So passion and then reading. Then number three is meditation. You must learn to see to some things you've read and roll them over in your mind. You know, 
the reason why when I say in the name of Jesus, things happen, is because I meditate on the name of Jesus every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I must meditate on the name. I must give it 20, 30 minutes just to think about the name every weekend. Even now, when you go to my bag, you will find the book, The Name of Jesus. It's there. I meditate because the power is in the name. So I've decided to program my life to keep refilling my spirit with the understanding of the power in the name of Jesus. So when I say Jesus, it's very different from when somebody says Jesus. It's coming from a depth. I meditate on it. In chapter 24 of Genesis, verse 63, Genesis 24, verse 63, it says, and Isaac went to the field to meditate. Ah, huh? To meditate. He went to the field. Your field can be a house. Your field can be your sitting room. Your field can be a little corner hotel somewhere. But you must have a field, a time, where you sit down. And then you look within. You meditate. No man of revelation will lack the habit of meditation. No man of revelation will lack the habit of meditation. No man of revelation will lack the habit of meditation. It is meditation that brings revelation. Apostle John Suleiman, I heard him say that every day he has one hour of thinking. Every day he has one hour of thinking. Is that not meditation? Papa lives there. We don't even know when he stops and when he starts. He's always in meditation. He's always meditating. Pastor Chris, your kilometer talks about there are things meditation will give you that prayer cannot give you. He himself at some stage, he meditated until the word literally lifted him from the ground. Akainuka if telling him. See abracadabra reality. And the word lifted him and then brought him down. And then he says he felt his destiny arranged. He meditates every day. You know, there's something you want to understand about God and life. We don't win by running. We win by waiting. You know, some of you think that, ah, I have a business. I've gone there. I've talked about it. Hey, I'm trying to advertise my thing. I'm online. You know, I'm, I'm out. I'm out. I'm doing my thing. I'm doing my thing. You think that's what will make things work? We don't win by running. Do you know what the Bible says, Pastor Fred? I saw this this week. Rufus. That Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, it says, They that wait upon the Lord shall mount up with wings as eagles. He says, They shall run and not be weary. Huh? They shall walk. When will they mount? When will they run? By waiting. By waiting. It is the time you spend in meditation and in the presence of God that determines how fast you run in life. How high you will fly. It says, they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. Isaiah 40, verse, verse 13, 31, Abi. Verse 31. It says, they shall mount up kobos, kabula bragada skotesh kediyas. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Then they shall run. They shall not be weary. And then they shall walk. The distance you cover in life is determined by the strength you drew from your seasons of waiting. That's a tatizo where we unataka kupata results without waiting. It's not by might. It's not by power. Asking Ahab. The rain came and he started running. Elijah had waited for seven hours. Grace came upon him. There is a grace that comes upon you when you wait in meditations and in prayers in the presence of the Lord that even your contemporaries can match you in life. Results are programmed by grace, not by effort. Results are programmed by grace. And grace is from that time of waiting and meditation. Come, somebody say I hear. So you get understanding by meditation. You must create time for it. And I'm not saying you meditate on your problems. You meditate on the word. The scriptures. 
meditate on them. Am I talking to somebody? And then, number four, how do you get spiritual understanding? By having a thankful, clean, clear heart. A thankful, a clean. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? He whose hands are clean. Whose heart has so sown deceitfully. Abi? You must have that kind of heart. I realize that unforgiveness, bitterness, offense, and all that nonsense, they make the heart so heavy. You can't hear God. There are people who can't sleep well when someone has offended them. They'll be tossing and turning and coughing in between. <coughs> they can't even eat. A call can make them not to eat. A call. <laughs> and then the anger, the offense fills the heart. If you want God, am I talking to somebody? If you want God, how many want God? Do? If you want this God I'm talking about, this your heart has to be a childlike heart. Jesus said, unless you receive the kingdom of God as a what? As a child. Have you realized, not even realized, doctors even say that your immunity is boosted when you don't have stress. Your ability to fight diseases on a human level is boosted when your heart is full of joy and gratitude. Now, your spiritual is just the functionality of this body that God created. That any time you achieve something and you're happy, you release what they call endorphins. <laughs> My name is Dr. Matko. Can I go deeper? Nonsense. Eh? I've not said a do state. I've said end of him. In Achillea. And it's another energy that is released from a nerve in your brain. Anytime you achieve something. So, natural. How much more the spiritual virtues you tap when you're happy. When your heart is light. You can't access revelation with a heavy heart. You can't. Stop carrying your auntie. Your auntie is busy enjoying her life. No man, baby. Stop carrying your father. Who died 15 years ago? You're still mad with your father. You say, I don't like. I don't like men. And if anyone called Francis, Nasienga Kakitu, because your father should be called Francis and left your mother when you're seven years. You are now 44. Akili Badu Imejai, your father. What is wrong with you? Don't you think you're caging your destiny? Okay, Alimuacha, and so are you not alive? Okay, your father mist, uh, mistreated your mom. Maybe even now your father took another woman and they live in Kitengela. Aren't you happy that you're alive? Okay, and let everything that has breath, not as father. Let it do what? Praise the Lord. You keep sending texts to that your father. Useless man. Nonsense. You will die like a poor man. He will not die. As you're saying die, he's buying another house. Your bitterness is making you broke. He is enjoying life. Probably even last night I was in a club somewhere. Na kafanya iyo photo, na katuma. And then you have befriended him on Facebook so that you can monitor him. Then you see the happiness and you're struggling. Ah, you will die for nothing. You better advise yourself. You better pick up your joy and make your life work. That bitterness will hinder what? Revelation. It's like a woman who is always sad because of what the husband is doing. So your husband has become your life. Please listen. Your husband is not Jehovah. You only have one Lord. <laughs> His name is Jesus. 
the rest we can change. People die and people live. So you cannot say that my, my husband, my husband is my life. Your husband cannot be your life. Let me be honest with us. You know, I, I've been following the discussion of mama and all that, and I think she's doing a good job. What do you think? Yeah. I think, I think Pastor Faith is doing a good job. But <laughs> Amen. And we thank God for her. Akina naomba sana squeeze. Squeeze na sikia ruko koko koko. Aitapa continue. Naomba sana. Lazima ombe. You can't stay with me with all prayer. I'm a prayer man. Usinione hivi. I don't get my knowledge from books. I get my knowledge from prayer. I read to diversify knowledge. But I pray to collect knowledge. Let me say something on, just, just something small on marriage. You know, the reason why many people are frustrated in marriage is because you expect your husband to make you happy. You expect your wife to make you happy. It's the greatest mistake you can make in marriage. Happiness is not from spouse. Happiness is from Christ. Until you make Christ the source of your happiness, you'll be frustrated in that home. You're still waiting for your husband to bring gift. You've been married for the last 15 years. So those 15 years, he has never carried gift. You're still mad with him. He doesn't buy you gift. You better stop that madness. I think you are bewitched. Because that's why we are a joy and a kwanga if you. Ile siko kuletea gift, we are the only no kampatia. So that you can bring it to your birthday for your friends to see that you're born. But you know the one who bought the cake. Uli kata ka flower po inja kwa mbiya. Please carry, carry it for me. Na ata vile na ibebo, we can tell he doesn't carry flowers. Is your flowers? But he's doing like this. Is your flower? But he's doing. Like this. <laughs> If you get mad and you, th and you say your marriage is not working because your husband doesn't buy gift, kuna, kuna, kuna not lose. You are perishing because you lack knowledge. <laughs> you are perishing. You better make Christ your source of happiness. Once you do that, what they do and what they don't do will not matter much. In fact, it will make you a better husband. It will make you a better wife. Because the love of Christ is the solid love that can make the heart of man complete. From assurance from Christ, then you can love your spouse. Na watu melele watafauti. Mimi kuna watu najua mabibi zao ni second gods. Ata utawosha migu, nini, nini, my wife, what not. Wapake mabibi zao mafuta. I mean, there are, where? I've passed her for 20 years plus. I've seen things. Mama takuwa meka hapo. Kama Queen Sheba. Mzendo uya meshika mgu. Yes, mom. And there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you don't have that grace, please don't try that nonsense. It's not your own. <laughs> I have a friend. I love him so much. We all know him. Ah, the way he talks about his wife, you even wonder whether you're married. Amen. When he comes here, you know he introduces his wife. Five, ten minutes will be my wife, my queen, my kingdom. Say, let me mean my Miss Mama and scriptures. And I told Mama, please don't get stressed. This is not my style. <laughs> Are you not happy? He said, babe, I'm happy. Amen. Seto. Don't expect me to do that. It's not me. The day I'll do that, even you people will be very concerned. Say, hey. Something is wrong with Papa. We need to pray for him. And my friend has been doing it for the last seven, eight years. Even when he was dating. Me, the day I was introduced to that woman, by words, before seeing her, say, I want to see this queen. Yeah. By the time meeting her during dating was a big ceremony. We are to do it in intercourse. Just for me to meet someone you can imagine. <laughs> Proposal. Ah, Tarumbeta Zilepigo. 
but it's him. And they're enjoying marriage. I'm also enjoying my own. What do you think? Am I not enjoying my own? Is she not happy? So, the thing is this. Let the life of Christ complete you. <laughs> don't get stressed by what others are doing. Please, and don't get... Please, just let the love of Christ be the fulfillment of the law in your heart. When you are convinced and assured of Christ's love, you will love without sweat, without effort. The other day, I bought a clean Mercedes, KD something, Tia Raba. And I told her, I may not be doing what my friend is doing, but oh yeah, you can drive Mercedes better. Hey, now. So do you want was or do you want Mercedes? Hey, now. Okay, ask, do you want was or do you want Mercedes, Tia Raba, KD something? What do you want? Mercedes. You better go for Mercedes too. Hallelujah. Is enjoying life. Is he not enjoying life? Uh, we do it differently. Revelation. Amen. Now let's close this service. One of the things that will help you walk in revelation, apart from the four things I've told you, I've talked about meditation, past, uh, Reading, a clean heart. Let's wrap it all in the basket of prayer. You must be a praying machine. Amen? You must be what? A praying machine. I don't read Bible until I've prayed. When I pray, I can see Bible. Because I'm not reading Bible with my mind. I'm reading it with my spirit. When you spend time in prayer and then you take a Bible, it's not your mind reading, it's your spirit. You begin to see things with your spirit that your mind cannot pick. That is a revelation. All these things you find me teaching about land, what not, what not, these are revelations from prayer and reading the Bible after prayer. That's what there are things I will mention. You read the same verse, but you can't see them. I counsel you. No, there are those who read Bible, then pray. I don't understand how they do it. But the spiritual men I know, and including myself in my own little way, we pray in tongues for some time before touching Bible. So that when we touch Bible, it's not the mind reading. Niro inafanya nini? Naona. The spirit man. Because we don't read for information. We read for fellowship. We read to locate Christ. And for you to see Christ, you must have ascended the hill of the Lord in prayer. Try this, brothers and sisters, after every session of prayer, read the Bible. Even if it's 15 minutes, read it. If you have 15 minutes, read for 10, meditate for 5. After prayer. When you pray, especially praying in the spirit, you are sent. And when you are sent, the spirit man takes the ascendancy above the physical man. That is the natural you. Then you are able to see. Then now the word of God is able to work. You know the word of God does not work in your physical hand. It only works in your spiritual hand. It's not just quoting verses. It is your spirit quoting them through your mouth. That is the word that works. That's why you must be, oh yeah, you must be a man, a woman of prayer. The truth is this. Anyone who prays less than an hour, you have a long way to go in the journey of life. Because Jesus said, tarry with me a minimum of an hour. Those are the disciples. So anyone who is serving God in the ministry or in any capacity, and you're doing less than an hour, uh, you're hitting below the expectation of heaven. Omba, pray. Spend time speaking in other tongues. 
You say you don't have time. It is not time you don't have. It is priorities you've not programmed well. So you have time to go to Kekomba, but you don't have time to pray. You have time to watch Selina. You don't have time to pray. You have time to cook for hours. You don't have time to pray. You have time to breastfeed. You don't have time to pray. No, something is wrong. You have time to go to your uncle's place and sit there the whole afternoon, but you don't have time to pray. You have time to sleep oh, from 10 to 6 and you don't have time to pray. You have time to eat and you don't have time to pray. No. It's not time you don't have. It is priority that are misplaced. You have time. Oh. You have time. Don't tell me you don't have You have time. It is priorities that are not placed well. priorities. Sit down with your life and prioritize your spiritual life. Have time for prayer. Have time for study. Then let the rest arrange themselves. Are you listening? That's how you get revelation. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody? That is how you get what? Revelation. Sit down with yourself and spend time in prayer. Kwanza siku kama leo, where is the Islam? They have given us holiday. Why don't you slot some two, three hours in the house and just talk to God? Kadaba, barakat kuskesh, ikatola bayada, mak. You have added to your vows of prayer. If you don't make investments in prayer, where are you going to draw from in the day of trouble? Where are you going to draw from? What are the angels going to use to reach your life? Because angels use your prayers to reach to you. If you pray for only 15 minutes, what are you going to do in the realm of the spirit? Mambo ya land is jali. Tutendelea today at 10 p.m. Amen. We can, we, thank God is online. We can put service. We are not under the law. It's a day that walk in the spirit and no longer under the yeah. So 10 will do land service. Najo kuna tu bado kuna michanga tapa. But we thank God. We are still in the presence of God. Amen. The soil you came with is not sucking presence from the ground. Eh, uh -huh, now. It's not a master. I say soil, land. No, the land is hearing the word. He is sold to Tendelea now at 10 p.m. online. Na pia nispokuja sutelewa tu mepata. Su mepata neno leo. Uzi nisumbwe. You know, listen. Uh, it is me that is called. I'm the carrier of grace. Can't hold me ransom up. You must say land. You must say. Are you the one who gave me the revelation? You're not the one who gave me revelation. No. I'm the carrier of grace. Utapata hata sahi tu nikitoka mta amentumia text. Oh man of God, you didn't talk about land. You talk about what else do you want me to talk about? I'm the mouthpiece of God. I say what God wants me to say. That's all you're holding. The word is entering it now. Ah. Understand spiritual dynamics. It's what I must say. Land, land, uski, land, imeguswa. Ata satu na inaguswa. How many times have you come to service and we are preaching something else but God is touching another area of your life? We are talking about probably uh, prosperity but then you are getting healed in your body. Because the word is Christ. And Christ is the totality of the grace of God. Anytime you receive the word, you receive Christ and it goes to any area of your insufficiency and gives you sufficiency in God. That's why you can read the book of Leviticus and get a wife from it. It's not a mass of says and the wife and the wife. No, you can read and thou and thee and thou and thee and all that. And from that thou and thee, you get a customer. As you read it, angels pull customers. You are just in your office. Oh. Because Christ is the totality of the grace of God. Once you receive him, who is the word, he begins to feel your insufficiency.
Naongea na watu hapo. Please spend time with God. Spend time in prayer. I can't wait when they will remove the curfew. We we are going back to the night prayers. You remember the 12 to 5? The one Pastor Fred has said, Anapanda Mlima. We are going back to that. Mandate nights. You remember? Every Friday we will be here. We will be in Kilimani, sorry. Praying. We are going back to that. Waja tu watoe kafi. Hapa utako naomba. You will pray, sleep, we will wake you up. There is a young man. You remember that young man? In Kilimani. Eh, he will start prayer na moto. This time I'll teach you how to start prayer. Won't be like that young man. Because he will start with moto and then at 12, 12.45 he's asleep at the back. But thank God he was in the art of prayer. Sleep in church, but be in church. Pray. I like you to learn how to pray. And form the habit of prayer. And make prayer a part of your life and your thinking. You'll get revenge. Will understand many things. And not praying for specific things, just in the spirit. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but he speaketh unto God. It says, How bait? In the spirit, he does what? Mysteries. So anytime you speak in tongues, you are in the spirit and you're releasing mysteries. Mysteries are realities concerning your untold or unknown future. Things that your mind knows not. And your senses are not aware. But your spirit is pulling those realities from the realms of the supernatural and bringing them to the natural. You know not what thou have said. But in the spirit, you have made communications. I was telling mama the other day, my life took a different turn a few years ago when I put premium on speaking in tongues daily. A few years ago, in Du Bois Road, I made up my mind that every day I'll speak in tongues. And sometimes for hours. Kashu pala kete balo kadi rake zikapa. I tell you. Revelations even meet me when I'm driving. Because the tongues I spoke in the morning, they follow my spirit. They don't die. Oh. Tongues don't die. Mysteries don't die. Even in the washroom, something can need to pop. It's like, why, my God? Is this for? Passion. Reading. Meditation, a clean heart, and a life of prayer. These five stones will kill your Goliath. I can't you, amen. Just pray. And don't let your mind wonder, oh, this has been like this for so long. Oh, this is it. Oh, will things ever change? You see, those thoughts kill your spirit. They kill the life in your spirit. Paul says in Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, he says, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Anxiety will kill spiritual life. Anxiety will suffocate power. Anxiety will make your spirit not to function as a God man. So remove those thoughts. What has not happened, leave it. Focus on prayer. Focus on developing your spirit to God. Ah! Oh! You will begin to testify in ways you've never thought possible. This is my life. This is my little life. Is all by praying in the spirit apart from other things like meditation giving and all that. But I can tell you, major secret is in prayer. And not just prayer. It is praying in other things. Most of the time I pray in tongues until I see this morning. Swallow. I go to bed. I 
an hour a night is more than enough. Between 12 and 5, slot an hour there, speak in tongues. Kadaba. It will do you wonders. You don't need to pray the whole night. You're not a pastor. But if God gives you grace, better. But that's an hour in the night. Just ketos, kadila, barakas, kumulesh, kapari, edeskoto, ekato, eklata, rakata, zupeleka, eshegete, barakata, reskopla. You said it at two. This is 2.20. Kitabayaka. And please don't be ashamed to time yourself. There's nothing wrong with that. Set a watch. It's 2.35 now. I have 25 minutes. Continue. Don't be discouraged. Continue. If you feel that you're getting sleepy and your mind is wandering, stand up. You don't have to be seated. Open your eyes. Sometimes when you open your eyes, your mind sobers up. Abi? Hey. Omba. Karababa. Barodoro. Sodoro. See your future. Then when you symbolize the spirit, close your eyes again. If your mind wanders again, get a verse, put it there. Pray. Now it's 2.45. You're aiming at least an hour. 2.56, you have four minutes. Now, the beauty about prayer is that the more you pray, the sweeter it becomes. It is hard when you start. And it is easier when you, if you're praying for two hours or three hours, you realize when you're doing your, the third hour, you want to continue. I don't know if you've noticed that. When you start, it will be a struggle, but the more you pray, the more you want to pray. Because the spirit gives the utterance, and the flesh is giving way to your spirit. People wonder, how do you pray for three hours every day? How do you do four hours? It, it, even us, we don't know. But after the first hour, you realize the second hour in Enda too, the third hour in Ajipeleka too, actually you swim in it. It's not you praying now, it is the prayer pulling you. Amen. Once you start praying, just one hour, you'll be a woman of revelation. You'll be a man of revelation. Somebody say amen. Are we blessed? Yes. Rise up on your feet. If you came with your soul, lift it up. I want to bless it. Nonsense. The truth is, is, the soul is hearing Christ now. I have not shared a message. I've shared Christ. You know there are meetings whereby you don't come to give a message. You come to give yourself. Paul says, we gave not only the message but also ourselves. He said, we, we spent and were spent. Nairobi will favor you Lift that soil up in the name of Jesus. By the action of the living Christ, I command any curse on that soil to be broken now. 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 It says, Thou shalt love mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time has come. This soil you're holding on your hand will kadusketa brakashada will carry favor from this altar and wherever you are whether it's business whether home whether career whatever it is carry favor carry favor carry favor carry favor carry favor i speak to principalities and powers in that soil i speak to curses and altars in that land you're holding and i command let the lordship of christ take over let the lordship of christ take over let the Lordship of Christ take over. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Somebody say, Nairobi will favor me. Say it well, oh. Say it convincingly. Say this land will favor me. I'd like you to know that in these 10 days, something will happen to your realm. You know, it says the heavens and the earth bear witness. None of you will suffer in this Nairobi. I don't like your amen. I said none of you will suffer in this Nairobi. Under the unction of the living Christ. I decree your star will shine the brightest from this day henceforth. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Lift up your hands and thank you for favor in this land of Nairobi. Go ahead and thank him. Thank
thank him for favor. Thank him for favor. This land will favor me. You are thanking him for favor. Favor of the land. That in this land I will meet my helpers. That in this Nairobi I will grow like the cedar in Lebanon. That in this land sickness will not touch me. That in this land I shall be the head and not the tail. Please go ahead and thank him for favor. Thank him for favor. Thank him for favor. Thank God for favor. But record proscot Allah. So shall it be. In Jesus name. Please be seated. God giving us grace at 10 p.m. online. We will continue with this characteristics of Lord. You must catch this. How many have been blessed today? Uh, how many have caught the realm of God today? How many will go for understanding? Good. Well, please package your tithes, your first fruits, your thanksgivings, and your blessedness. You're paying your tithe. You're online, or you're offering fast foods. The information is on the screen. And I like all those who are watching and on ground to make it here on Sunday and carry soil of either where you stay, where you walk, where you do business. My assignment is not even the village. This time is Nairobi or any major city you work in. Maybe watching me from different parts of the world. Carry soil of that area. And on Sunday, first service at 9, second service at 11. Is it first? 9? Nine? 9. 9 and 11. Please ensure you are here on ground. We are on garden. Estate Road, 300 meters from Thicker Road Superhighway, using exit 7 if you're coming from the city center. For more information, there are numbers running there on the screen. You can call and be able to be here on Sunday. Carry your soil. You will thank God you did. Father, thank you for all the titles. On ground, if you're paying your tithe, rise up on your feet. I want to bless us. All the titles, the first fruitos on ground and online. The blessing of the Lord is upon you in Jesus' name. Now let everyone rise up on their feet also with their blessedness and lift it up and thank God for this service. Lift up your seeds, lift up your offering, and let the name of the Lord be magnified. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name. Let the ashes go round. You're lifted. God bless you online. Start casting your own. Once you've given, please thank God. Once you've given, please thank God. Thank Him from the depth of your heart. Niwewe. Waku wabudiwa. Niwewe. Niwewe. Waku wabudiwa. Lift up hands and tell him. Now we Blessing of the Lord to cover your life this weekend. 
the Lord my God who has called me into ministry to preserve you in every way in the name of Jesus in this month of new beginning experience your own beginnings in Jesus name you are lifted for life God richly bless you let's meet at 10 p.m. online as we continue with this land must favor me God bless you God bless you online worshipers on ground lift up hands let's worship him again Na eshima ni